If you're hiking or ski touring or climbing in a cold backcountry environment, especially in rugged terrain, you're going to experience periods of intense effort while you're moving with a big drop in metabolic output and heat production when you're not moving. This recurring pattern creates kind of a cascade of thermoregulatory discomfort because exertion causes sweating which gets your base layer and other clothing wet. And then when you stop, you start to chill and you get cold. And this happens whether you're just stopping for a break or the wind picks up or the sun goes down. And even when you crawl in your sleeping bag and you have a little bit of moisture in your clothing system, you're gonna be a bit chilled as you try to fall asleep until that moisture dries up. The problem starts when liquid moisture starts to accumulate in your base layer. Liquid moisture gets there during high exertion activity because you're sweating. And it gets there when you stop to rest because all that warm, humid air that is in the next to skin microclimate starts to cool down and then that moisture vapor condenses into liquid droplets on the fibers in your clothing. And that liquid water in your clothes drives two important processes. The first one is evaporation. In order to maintain thermal equilibrium in this warm next to skin environment, that water wants to evaporate and the process of evaporation requires heat and the source of that heat is your body. The second way that liquid water in your clothes saps your body heat is via conduction. Wearing a damp layer of clothing next to your skin conducts heat from your body many times faster than a dry layer of clothing because water conducts heat more effectively than a dry fiber or an air pocket. Our industry's most common response to this problem is the so-called wicking base layer fabric, which is usually made with a polyester knit. And the main issue with these wicking fabrics is that the same force that causes wicking, the force of capillary action, is the same force that hangs onto water and results in that fabric retaining moisture. In addition, wicking fabrics cause the liquid moisture in that garment to disperse, which increases its surface area, and that increases the evaporation rate. So now we have a fabric that is causing faster evaporative heat loss because of wicking. And then once that garment starts to get saturated, it's now conducting heat away from your body. So instead of using a wicking base layer, we need a different approach that stabilizes the next to skin microclimate and minimizes perspiration in the first place. Because the drier we can keep our base layer, the less heat we'll lose to both evaporation and conduction. So the question we have to ask ourselves is this. Is there a fiber type and fabric structure that allows us to stay drier during periods of high exertion and allows us to stay warmer when we do stop moving? And I think the answer to that question is polypropylene mesh or fishnet. Polypropylene fibers are hydrophobic and non-wicking, so we don't experience the rapid dispersion of liquid moisture that results in wicking and corresponding high evaporation rates. And the fishnet fabric structure has fewer fibers and larger pores, and that prevents moisture from becoming trapped in the fabric and causing rapid conductive heat loss. Now the base layer that serves as the foundation for most of my cold weather layering systems is a Brynja Super Thermo t-shirt. Its two key characteristics are that it's made from a hydrophobic polypropylene fabric and it has big holes. And I think the secret in choosing the right type of mesh base layer lies in making sure that those pores in the fabric are large enough. Brynja Super Thermo has pores that are 30 times larger than those found in most polyester knit fabrics and that gives it tremendous advantages during both high exertion activity and at rest. At exertion, we can use those holes to our advantage by ventilating our outer garments and allowing the cool, dry air from the outside to replace the warm, humid air in those pores next to your skin. With such big pores, this happens quickly and effectively, which reduces your skin temperature and that reduces your sweating. In addition, that air exchange minimizes the impact of condensation of liquid in your base layer because you are now keeping that air next to your skin drier. And then when your exertion level drops, you can use those same holes to your advantage because when you button up the ventilation on your outer garments, those holes in the fishnet trap air that your body warms up and now it's acting as an insulating garment. I think the optimum scenario where a fishnet base layer really shines is when your activity requires repeated transitions between high output, low output, and rest. 
When I'm hiking, my body's metabolic output is constantly changing, and sometimes it's pretty difficult to regulate because my route may involve steep climbs or walking along an exposed ridgeline or difficult bushwhacking or just sauntering down an easy trail. And all of these activities and the transitions between them place different demands on my thermoregulatory comfort and on my layering system. And one of the most difficult things to manage in conditions like this is making the layering adjustments required to stay dry and comfortable. So you're constantly making these micro adjustments, adding a layer here, taking off a layer there. And I think one of the biggest things I've noticed since wearing fishnet base layers is that I make fewer adjustments throughout the day. And instead I rely on the ventilation of my outer layers to control the airflow into and out of the fishnet. Now, most of us don't really want to take the time or effort to change layers throughout the day constantly. So we just accept that we're going to get our base layers wet during periods of high exertion activity and then suffer the consequences of evaporative and conductive heat losses when we slow down or stop. And I don't think fishnet completely solves the problem. In fact, even hydrophobic polypropylene fishnet with big holes is still going to absorb some water. But over the course of more than 20 years of wearing Brynja fishnet base layers, the bottom line is that I do stay drier, I do stay more comfortable, and I'm able to do so with a simpler layering system and simpler adjustments throughout the day.